Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, all my Watercolor Wednesday people. I'm so glad you're here. Today is part one of the Watercolor Journal. I am just so excited to be able to start this project with you. And those of you who have uh, gotten all of your products and you're ready to follow along with me, we are gonna have the best time. And if you don't know what I'm talking about and don't know what the Watercolor Journal is, um, go back to the tutorials where uh, just back a couple of weeks where it says um, new watercolor release with Bonnie and you'll see the picture of the journal on there and I just sort of walk you through the whole process what we're going to be doing over the next few um, tutorials how we're going to put this little project together and that we're going to uh, make this really fun cute little Christmas journal. This one right here, we're gonna make this, you guys. <clears throat> Today is part one of that. And if you are new to this and you don't have any materials and you don't have any dyes, don't worry, you'll catch up because uh, we're gonna space out the tutorials two weeks. So today is the first part one. Part two will be on August 3rd. So it'll be two weeks from today on Watercolor Wednesday. And then in between, I'll do my regular watercolor tutorials. So I'll just, you know, pick and choose and do some fun summer projects. <clears throat> And then every two weeks, we're gonna come back to the watercolor journal. And if you're not interested in the journal, you can still learn a lot from these tutorials. So you can still make great little cards with these stamps. <coughs> Excuse me. So don't let that deter you, deter you if you're not a watercolor journal person and you're not quite sure you wanna do this project. It is going to be so fun though. Um, so those of you who are prepared and you've got all your products in front of you, I'm going to really try to slow down these tutorials so that we can all stay together. Uh, I'll show you exactly what dyes we're going to be using. And then as we go, I'll get better at uh, being prepared to tell you what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial so that you have two weeks to get everything ready and cut and um, you know all your dies cut and your papers and everything ready to go. So all we, all we need to do then is our watercolor projects and then assemble our journal page that we're working on. Okay, so um, there are a couple things to know and Renee, who heads up our design team, she has already set up our blog because I want to see what you guys are making. I am, I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm excited you're following along with me, but I wanna see what you're making. I wanna see how your pages are turning out. So she wrote me a sort of a list of important information that I can tell you. Um, if you go to artimpressions.com and you'll see on there the blog, there's a bunch of little tabs and it'll say blog. If you click that, it'll take you to the Art Impressions blog and that's where you can see the journals. Now there's a tab and it's called Bonnie's Journal at the top of the blog and that's where you'll find the current tutorial. So uh, you can see it on Facebook, it's gonna be archived on Facebook, but the current tutorial will also be there. Um, each tutorial will be tagged with <clears throat> Bonnie's Watercolor Christmas Journal Tutorial. So uh, if you need to find previous ones, she says they'll be there. You can go to the bottom of the current tutorial and click that and you'll see previous ones. So you can always catch up. If you're jumping in in the middle, don't worry. You can go back and catch up with us. It's, it's not gonna be a big deal. And like I said, we're gonna space these out. <clears throat> you can also upload your pages. So uh, just like she says, just like you would a challenge card, you can upload your pages to the blog so that we can all see them. I'm so excited about that. She says, please add first name, last initial so that we know who it is. So first name, last initial. And then if you're on Instagram, uh, use this hashtag. So AI watercolor Christmas journal. So this one right here, you wanna use that AI watercolor Christmas journal hashtag on Instagram, and then we'll be able to see your, your projects on Instagram too. So you guys, I wanna see what you're doing. Uh, this is like the most exciting thing for me is to see how your journals are turning out. And you know what? They don't all have to be exactly like mine. I'm gonna go through mine step by step for those of you who wanna do it the exact same way as I did, but feel free 
to be free with it. And, you know, if you want to add something a little personal to it or you want to change up, you know, some of the dyes, that's the whole fun of it. There are so many different dyes and so many ways that you can use them. And uh, you're not locked into what I'm showing you, especially not locked into what to what I'm showing you. So I'll be excited to see what you're going to be doing. I know our design team is also going to be creating some journals and some of our Copic artists, they're going to be doing them with Copic. So that will also be really fun to see. So I just, I'm just, I'm beside myself, you guys, over this project. I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see what everybody's doing. So uh, let me say hi to a few of you. So tell me if you're ready to go and you're ready to go with me. <clears throat> Okay, Dot is on. Okay, Kathy Hales, hi. Catherine Andrews, good morning. Janet, hello. Uh, Janet's so excited for this. I know, Janet, me too, can you tell? Uh, Debbie Hedges says, isn't Renee Matteries amazing? Renee is amazing. I don't think a day goes by that I don't say a silent thank you, Lord Jesus, for Renee because she is awesome. And, you know, I just mentioned on the last live that I wanted to be able to see everyone's work. She was on it and she had it all set up for me. And, you know, and here we are and it's all ready to go. So I'm just so thankful for her. I'm thankful for our talented design team. I'm just, I'm thankful for our team in the shop who's getting everything out. And uh, you guys are all rock stars. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Debbie from Chicago, hello. Barbara, hello. Barbara says she's ready to go. Okay, awesome. Tina, hello. She says, I'm excited, love this, me too. Teresa is ready. Um. Oh no, I now have COVID, so this is my project. Oh no, Roberta, honestly. You know what, I'm at week three and finally feeling I, like I'm back among the living. So I just, I feel for you. It's, it's terrible. Um, Sandy, Debbie, yes, Debbie, Mary, all of you guys, thank you so much for being on with me. Um, at the end, I'm going to show you what you're going to need for the next tutorial. So if you want to, you know, feel free to take screenshots of anything that I'm showing, if that helps you. So, you know, at the very end, I'll come back on and I'll show you exactly what we're going to need for the next tutorial. So that gives you two weeks to kind of get your things cut out and um, get ready for the next one. So I'm guessing it's going to take about uh, five to six tutorials. We may be able to do it in five, but again, I don't want to rush it. And uh, we're just going to see how it goes. If we can get through two pages, great. Uh, some pages are a little more labor intensive than others. And, you know, we're just going to go with it. But we should be finished by the 1st of October. And uh, then we'll be on to the next one. And you know what? I love seeing your ideas. I'm thinking uh, harvest. And then maybe I will um, see if I can throw in there, throw in a Halloween also, which, you know, I love Halloween. I just, I, I, you know, in my mind, I see these little journals with bats and webs and, you know, little haunted houses and just, I think it's just going to be, it's going to be so fun. But I also love fall and fall colors, you guys. So, um, there, we're going to, we're going to use this journal a ton. I have so many plans for it. So I hope you guys will stay with me and we'll just be able to create journals left and right. The nice thing too, about having the dies and going through these tutorials is that you can do several at a time. You've got two weeks. So, once we go through the tutorial, you can you can make several of these. You might as you know do it while you're while you're uh, watercoloring one. Just do another one, and then you've got two little journals that you can send at Christmas time. So <clears throat> Janice says you got me with Fallen Halloween. I know, I know, I absolutely love it. Um, some of you have already made your journals. I am so impressed. Uh, you know, uh, uh, one post, uh, and I, I should have written down who posted it, but she said, I'm just a very impatient person and I just had to make it. I get that because I'm also very impatient. And when I see something and uh, then I want to make it right away. So she did. And there are several of you who have already made them. So if you've already made your journal, get it posted on the blog. Uh, that would be amazing. We would all love to see all the pages in it. Um, okay. 
Yeah, Lee is on, joining a bit late. Uh, glad you're here, Lee. We're so glad. Maggie, love the harvest idea. I know, me too. Uh, Erm is on. Hello, Erm. Hello, Teresa. She is on and watching. Uh, could we get a full list of extra dyes you will be using? Yes, Maureen. I am going to be better organized at that. Um, I've already talked to Renee about it. It's going to be on the blog, so you'll be able to for sure see. There aren't a lot of extra things that we're going to need besides um, the set of stamps that we're using and the journal dies. So I try to keep it just in the set of journal dies, especially for this first one. Um, <clears throat> I want you to be able to have everything that you need. The only thing that I really used was a circle from our double stitch dies and ovals from the double stitch dies. So I really tried to keep it um, just within uh, those journal dies. Um, okay, you guys, are you ready to get going? Let's get going on this. I'm going to flip my camera around and then I'll show you what else we're going to be using and we'll get started. We're going to do our watercolor projects first and then once those are done, we're going to assemble our journal. Okay, you guys, here we go. Okay. Let me move everything out. I, okay, I'm moving my iPad closer to me so that I can <laughs> I can see the comments, you guys. I'm trying. I am. I'm gonna really try hard to see if there's any questions because um, I want to make sure you guys are all with me. And you know, if I'm going too fast, to, you know, say that on the comments. Be sure to say that on the comments. I'll try to, like I said, I'm going to try to um, slow this down so that we can all stay together. And, you know, the biggest thing too is, you know, these are very simple, basic projects. So I didn't make anything too complex because I, I don't want anyone to be intimidated to make these journals. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep that throughout, you know, regardless of what the theme of the journal is, I'm going to keep it basic so that everyone at every skill level can do these projects. They're going to be simple. And if you're just a beginner, uh, I promise you, you can do these projects. You really can. And I'm going to slow it down and keep it really simple. So don't let that, um, don't let that stop you from uh, trying these. Okay, so here is what we're going to make today. We're going to make the cover. Uh, we're going to attach the little clasps. If you have these, now if you don't have them, they're not they're not mandatory to make the journal, but they are an extra set of dies. If you bought the bundle, you got these in the bundle. Um, <clears throat> you can also you can always get them if you haven't purchased them. You've just purchased what we're going to be using today. Don't worry, you can always use these, uh, get these later if you want to, or you can uh, close your journal another way. You know, there's lots of different ways that you can close a journal with you know twine and ribbon and um, lots of really cute ways. So we're going to attach the clasp. So we're going to make the cover. And then we're going to do the first page. And that is this page right here. So we're going to make this little card. And then we're going to make this little um, snowman in the frame right here. So we've got three little watercolors that we're going to be doing. These two little snowmen and then the little wreath. And what we're going to use is... Uh, the two little snowmen come in a set. So this is Christmas snowman set 5571. This is the one that we're going to use. We're going to use both of these. And then the little sentiment. So we've changed this up a little bit and the sentiment is a little bit different. You know, this was these this was all made with prototypes. And so I've I've changed a few things and improved a few things since I've made this journal. So if you see something that isn't exactly the same, um that's that's why is because um I've made some changes since I since I actually made this prototype. So uh, we're going to make this extra little card, just this cute little card that we're going to assemble, and we're going to make this little wreath. So <clears throat> here are the sentiments. Here's the joy right here. It's a little frillier. Uh, we're going to use that one on, on this little envelope, uh, this little pocket. And then here is the, um, the clasps. This is the clasp set. It is 5556. Five, five, here are the steel dies. So these are the template dies. This is the template for the journal, and it includes everything that you're going to need for the journal. So and you can see a picture of, you know, some of the pages on here. And here's what all the, um, the little accessories look like. 
Uh, in addition, okay, so we're going to add to the journal, we're going to add this tree right here, and that is from this set, watercolor tree set one, it's 5010, we're going to use this one right here, no trunk, so we're going to tuck it down in the snow right next to this little snowman, and then we're going to put snow on top, so this one right here, and the only other one we're going to need is this little guy, it's from the mini flower set, uh, there's also... Um, tiny little foliages like this in other sets. So look around and see what you have. If you don't have this one, uh, look around and see what you have. You can also use the tip of something, you know, just the very tip. Uh, so that will also work. Okay, so those two, um, obviously the journal dies, and these. So let me now show you... Um, in fact, let's just, let's get going on our watercolor projects and then I'll show you what dyes we're going to use and how we're going to assemble them into, um, into the journal. Okay, so we're going to start out with this little guy here and we're going to stamp him first. So I'll make sure I'm on the screen here and you guys can see clearly. Okay, here is the stamp, and I've just put him on an acrylic block straight. Make sure he's straight. Uh, if these are brand new to you and you haven't used them before, they can be a little hard to see. So, you know, I would say, you know, stamp it onto a uh, black ink pad or use a black marker or a dark marker and color the whole thing and then clean it off. And it'll stain it a little bit so that you can see uh, a little clearer you know, where to put your uh, marker because we're going to use two markers on this. Let's see. It's probably easier for you to see on the white. So the first thing that we're going to do, and we're going to do this with everything that has snow, that has some bright, bright white areas and also some colored areas. So we're going to use two colors, and those two colors are our basic colors that we use for pretty much every project. It's the 565 and the 969. The only difference is that uh, you know, we're going to start with the blue, but we're only going to add the 969 to the areas that have color. Okay, so that would be, for example, um, let me show you on here. It's a little easier to see on here. So his hat, um, his face, just his face, his scarf, uh, his little vest, uh, his arms, the little bird, the buttons, you know, all of those areas that are going to be dark and have a color. Now, these lines here that's the, that are the snowman, those are going to stay white. So we're not going to add any extra brown to these. The same uh, with the side of his face here. So there's not a lot of areas that are going to stay white, but it is really important to keep that blue um, sort of um, clean and not have any of the brown in it, Okay. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to stamp it off. So I've got a piece of scratch um, watercolor paper. And by the way, this is watercolor paper, Canson watercolor, 140 pound cold press. So this will not work on cardstock unless you want to do something like an alcohol based marker or colored pencils or things like that. But for this technique, we need to use watercolor paper. Okay, so we're going to start out with the dark blue, the 565, and we're going to color the whole thing. We're just going to go over the whole thing with the blue. And use the side, you know, use the side of your marker. And just get everything, the little buttons. You know, just make sure you get every little area. Okay? Now we're going to come over those areas with the brown, the 969, and we're just going to add brown to those areas. If you get a little bit on something, you know, it's okay. Don't stress out about it. You know, his little vest, his arms, you know, if you forget a little area to add brown, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. So remember, this area down here, that needs to stay blue. You know, his little vest, his scarf. All of these little areas that are going to be dark, including his little features on his face. 
we're also going to get those. Not the side, you know, of his face, but just the features. Okay, and I'm going to stamp it off now because I, you know, I don't want it too dark. And I'm actually going to do it again. I'm going to stamp it off again. Now I'm going to huff on it. And I've got it really, really light on here. And this is really how we want it. Um, you know, we're going to add a lot of color to it. So we want to see that, uh, that brown, you know, shade on there. We want to see that sort of antique, you know, um, realistic looking brown. But we don't want it to be too muddy. We've got a lot of like lights and bright colors. So we don't want it too muddy. So this is really... Um, you know, how we want it. You could even stamp it off one more time if you want it super light. Um, that is totally up to you. And you can see the blue down here and the blue in here. Okay, everybody with me so far? Everybody got their little snowman stamped? Uh, I'm gonna take my number four brush now. And by the way, we're gonna be using some white. We're gonna be using our uh, PH Martins Bleed Proof White. We're gonna be using lots of this, you guys. You're gonna be, by the time you're done with this journal, you will be an expert at applying Bleed Proof White paint, I promise. Um, so we're gonna be using this. So what I do is I have two containers of water like this. Um, these are just simple little ramkins, but they have a really flat, you know, wide bottom. And I can't tell you how many times I have spilled my water. So this really solves that problem for me. It's they're flat, but the sides are short. And so they're really, really easy to use. I have two of these when I'm using the white so that I can clean the white out of my brush and I don't have, um, my water all muddied. So just, you know. Just a thought if you want to do that. Okay, so we're going to start out now by pulling the color out of the lines. And remember, we're pulling it from the darkest to the lightest. So we're going to drag this color to the center. And it's going to be light because remember, we stamped it off. So it's going to be really light. But we're going to see enough that we're going to get that um, sort of antique look and that mix of color. Now I'm going to do the, um, the areas that have the brown on them first. And then we'll go back and do the bright white. You know, under here, now even though this is a, a cylinder, so it's got a contour, the darkest area here is going to be on the bottom because the highlight is going to be up here. So it's really, it's more important that the, that the bottom part is the darkest. And then we're gonna just pull it out from here too. So you're not actually running your brush along the line. You're running your brush next to the line and letting that color bleed out. And we can do it with his little carrot nose here. Don't mess with anything else on his features. We're gonna come back in and keep those really um, fine. We're gonna do that with the, um, with the little twin tone. Now this little bird, he doesn't need a lot. He's just, he's so cute. We're gonna come back and get his eye and his beak. So we're gonna come back to him. And now his little stick arms, you can just add color to those. You don't really have to worry about pulling that color out of the line. They're so thin, the lines are so thin that we're just, you know, pretty much just adding color to them. I think I can zoom in a little bit more here so that you guys can see. Uh, Lorna says, that's good. My water always gets cloudy with the white paint. Yes, mine does too. Mine did too. And then, you know, I, I, I use it so much now that my water is white and actually, you know, it still works fine. Um, you know, if you don't have another, you know, container of water and you get your water kind of white, it actually, you know, isn't terrible. So, <clears throat> so if that happens and you don't, you can't jump up and go get another container of water, it's okay. Okay, so same with his little vest. We're just coming alongside of it here. And his, his little buttons. 
Okay, so this is a good start now. We've got a really good start here. This is really uh, how you want to start. Keep those, uh, keep the shadows down below. You know, keep it really light because we're going to add color. But you can see that it's al it already looks three dimensional. It just does because we've pulled that color out of the lines and we've sort of created a shadow here so that um, it looks like that is rounded. When you, when you brush in a shadow like this, you've made a contour here. You just do because you've got a highlight at the top and you've got a darker shadow on the bottom. And it just, it just creates that. Okay, so let's add some color now to this guy. We're going to use this uh, number 526. It's this bright blue. I just love it with Christmas. Now, you know, if you want to stick with red and green, by all means, you know, use the colors that you love. We're just, I'm just showing you how to color this, you know, as far as um, the technique goes, but you are certainly free to pick whatever colors that you want to use. Here's what I have going throughout uh, the whole theme of my um, my watercolor journal are these these colors. So these four colors, 565, 249 green, I love that cool green, 856 red, and 526 blue. And that's what I've got throughout my entire journal. You know, I've also, you know, um, I've also used, you know, the 969 too, especially on things that, you know, where his little arms are and his nose and all of that. I've used that too. But for the most part, it is these four colors that I just have used throughout. So you could keep the red and green and the, and the blue, and you could substitute this out for uh, maybe a really bright green or maybe a purple. That would be really cute too. Uh, maybe a teal or a turquoise or maybe just a different red. So use, you know, use the things that you love and use the things that are in your paper. So if you've got, you know, some different colors in your paper, something really bright, uh, you can certainly just match that with your markers. Absolutely. Okay, so let's put some color <clears throat> on the uh, palette. This is that bright blue. This is the 526, that bright blue. And we are going to add some color now to the hat. Start out light. You can see I've pinched my brush off and now I'm just dipping the tip. So the very tip goes in the water. See, just the very tip goes in the water and then pinch it off. If you're, if you're putting your entire brush in the water, even up to the metal, you can't, you're getting too much water. You can't pinch off enough water if you do that. So once you've really saturated your brush, just, just the tip is all you need. And then you can pick up a little bit of color also. So we can take some of this blue and just brush it on. Now the top, the little ridge of his hat, that's going to have a bit of a highlight. That little rim. It's just going to catch the light because it's the edge. So it's the top of the image. Even though this is the top of the image, his little rim also is. So we want to just catch the light on that rim. And then, you know, once that's dry, you can come in again underneath. And you can just darken that up. You know, this back in here, this little area back in here, that's going to be dark. So only right here would that little ridge kind of be showing. And it's these little things, you guys. It's these tiny little things that really make a difference. Nobody would even pick that out, probably. Uh, if you put that in the journal, they wouldn't say, oh, wow, look at that little <laughs> light-colored ridge. But overall, it's going to make a difference in the professionalism of your paintings, these little tricks make a big difference. And somebody instead is going to look at that and go, oh, that looks so realistic. How in the world did you paint that? It's just tiny little things, you guys. Tiny little tricks like that. Okay, remember now we've got a large, we've got a large um, contour here. So we're going to start where it's darkest. And that would be on the edge. Pinch your brush off now and pull it to the center. 
your brush is going to be really dry. See the edge here? We're going to leave that too. If you color all of this in solid, you will have a flat hat, a very flat hat. And, you know, you can just do one more pass under here if you want to, you know, and get this really, really dark right against his little face. And we're going to go back on his little hat. We're going to put a little um, greenery on here and some red berries. But for now, let's go on to his vest because it is, it's the same color. <clears throat> Just, you know, always start with it light um, because you can always go back and add more color. But once it's too dark or too flat or you've lost the highlight, it's really, really hard to fix that. You can now, though, go in with your bleed proof white and add the highlight back in. So, you know, we do have that option now. So <clears throat> don't fear. his little his little belly is okay <clears throat> how are we doing everybody with me okay so now let's do a little pattern here because we don't want his vest to look exactly like his hat so I'm going to just take my brush and get a little more color here. Make sure this is all dry. You know, this marker, this ink dries really quickly. So, you know, that's a good thing. the vest you know and it it honestly if you have a little bend in this line and this line you're good to go you really are you just we just don't want a straight line up and down because that will make his body straight we want to see that kind of pulling where it's kind of pulling his vest away a little bit um he's got it buttoned here but it's probably pretty tight and it's you know it's pulling from back here Okay, anybody have any questions so far? Am I going? Um, Nancy, I appreciate how you explain why you do things, not just how you do it. Yeah, yes, Nancy, that is right. And you know what? I have changed a lot and learned a lot over the years. And, you know, the biggest reason was being on the road. We were on the road with Expo for, for several years. And I did a lot of teaching and demoing. And I realized that I was doing these things and I wasn't explaining it. And I, you know, I learned that people don't always see and hear the important things and sometimes they'll miss something really simple. So when it's important, I really try to uh, make sure that you understand why we're doing it because it's a ma sometimes it's a matter of being successful and frustrated. It really is. Sometimes it's such a small thing. This is a very, very important thing to learn. 
if there is a contour and you are putting in a stripe, you have got to show a bow like that. If you're going this direction, it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same. You're going to see that contour line. If you don't show it, your image is flat. It's just going to be flat. Your little snowman will be a plank. He will not be a round, fat, jolly snowman. So even if it's a little, just a little bend, you're going to be um, so much happier with how it turns out. <clears throat> So I did learn that. You know what? I mean, it took me many, many, literally hundreds of hours of demoing and teaching that I understood that. So I sort of went back to square one. Uh, a lot of things were discontinued because they didn't fit the rules. And I came back to keeping it very, very simple. And, you know, just we don't really talk too much about where the light is coming from. We just talk about leaving a white space at the top, you know, and then it's not so much about, oh, I don't, I don't see that. I don't see where the highlight is. I don't see where the shadow is. Uh, you don't, you don't need to. The light is coming straight down. That's where it is. And the, and the highlight is going to be in the center of your uh, cylinder or your contour. And it just, it makes it easier to remember those things. There's a few rules that can't be broken. And, you know, other things that you can change up and kind of make your own. But in this case, uh, this is one of those rules. You just, you just have to, you just have to do it this way. And if you do and you, and you understand that, you're going to be so successful. You're going to be amazed at what you, what you can make. Okay, here's some green. <clears throat> 249. And we're going to take a little bit of this. And I'm going to switch out to my number one. If you have a zero, you can use a zero. If you have a one, you could use a one. I mean, I interchange them a lot unless it's something very, very tiny. And then I'll use my zero. But for now, I'm just going to take some of this green. And I'm going to make some stripes on here. Same thing with the contour. If it's easier for you to turn it so that you can make that uh, make those lines, then do it. What you have in the center is a straight line, though. This is pretty much straight. I mean, I've got a tiny bit of a contour in it, but the contours really are over here on the side. And they're going to kind of go in opposite directions. You see what I mean by that? You really need a tiny little brush for this. If you don't own a one or a zero, I would really encourage you to just get one, have a four and a one or a zero, uh, because it's really hard to do these tiny little details, you know, with a number four. So now we're going to take some more of this green and we're going to do the same thing here because these also have a bit of a contour, not as much, but they do. Now see this one has two. And because we make this with a little dip, we've got a fold in the scarf. And you know, whatever direction you're, you're sort of making these stripes, that's, that's the shape of your scarf. That will be the shape of your scar scarf. Your eye will just see it. Now see, this one comes down a little bit. This one comes down. This one comes up. And you can see now how three-dimensional this little scarf looks. It doesn't look flat, does it? It really looks like it's got some, um, it's, a, it's a little more rounded.
watching as well. Can't do two things at once either. Yes, that's why we leave these on here, Martha. You can watch right now and listen and then go back and do it. You've got, you've got two weeks to complete these little projects. So don't worry if you are um, not able to just follow along. Don't worry about that. You can always go back. Okay, so I'm adding the 969 now. <clears throat> And I'm still using my tiny little brush. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this color on his little nose using my brush because I don't want it too dark. Leave the highlight on the top. Just leave that highlight on there. Now, when it comes to his little buttons, we can make those dark. So I'm gonna take my twin tone and I'm just going to um, color these little buttons in. Leave a little highlight in the center. If you don't, they will look like little black holes. But leaving a highlight makes them look like little buttons. And I'm, I'm, you know, really kind of just coloring down the center of it. And now I can go in here and darken his little face. Same with the little bird. Okay, I'll give you guys a second to catch up. If you are uh, following along with me and you're caught up, uh, just grab your, uh, put a little more of this brown on your, um, your palette and a little red. So the 856. And we're gonna add a little color to this little guy. So I've just taken a little of this brown and you know where the eyes are, even if it's small like this, we still want to leave the highlight on the top and leave the eyes uh, white. So we never want to add too much color. Let me just hold this up so that you can see. See that white spot by the, by the eyes of this little bird? That's really important. It really is. It lightens up your whole character and it doesn't muddy the face and make the face look flat. So because we've got a highlight on there, the little face, the little head is round and you can see that and it lights up the little character. It just, it makes him happy. And then we can add a little red. We'll just make him a little Robin. So on the next tutorial, we're going to make a little um, cardinal. And, uh, you know, I took it from one of my um, birdhouse sets that has blue jays, and we're going to make it into a cardinal. But you can also make a little bird like this into a cardinal. I'm going to show you how to do that if you don't have that particular set. Okay, there he is, a little robin. And I'm just gonna put a little darker color right under his wing. And again, it's all about making things look three-dimensional. It just, it really is. Okay, we are getting finished with this little guy. So now <clears throat> let's do his, his little body. Let's pull out this blue. So 
So we can kind of see what's happening here and on his cheek. We're gonna add just a little shadow right under his hat. And that's also going to make this little bill, the bill of his hat, it's gonna make it kind of pop out. And, you know, we can add some little cheeks to him. That's also going to add contour to his face. Keep his eyes light, you know, always keep that area where his eyes are. Keep that really light. And then back here, you know, this is a contour, his little face. If you, if you feel like you have too much color, just pinch your, um, pinch your brush off. Just pinch it off as dry as you can get it. And just adding just a tiny little shadow underneath his vest, his little vest. Okay, so let's get on to the tree. We're going to put a little Christmas tree in here, and then we'll do the sky <clears throat> at the same time. So I'm going to get my green. This is my green 249, and here is my tree. And let me just make sure that I have it all cleaned off. I don't want to ink uh, the tree trunk. So I don't want to ink that at all. And you know, we're going to add a lot of white to it. So it doesn't, you know, don't worry about how you stamp this. Honestly, we're just getting the shape in. So you can see here, we're just getting the shape and you can swing this sort of like a pendulum and make it wider. So let me, let me just show you what I mean here. So you can ink it and then you can kind of swing it over and ink it again. You could even come up a little bit higher like that. So it's really, it's really just about what shape and how big you want to make it. You know, you could come up here like this too and then swing it out. Okay, so now I need to get that trunk cleaned off again because I just inked it up. Okay, so I'm just going to ink from here, from this part up. And I'm using that cool green. So this is a 249, that cool green. And I'm gonna put it, you know, pretty, pretty far up like this. And then I'm gonna ink it again and just drop it down a little bit more and then swing, kind of swing it out. You know, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. Maybe I should just add a little bit more here to the side and maybe a little bit more here to this side. And then we're gonna kind of sit it down in the snow here. So we may add some more down in here, but for now, this will work. And now we're gonna just take some of this green and we're just gonna add water to it. And you can kind of drag these branches out a little bit and kind of shape your little tree however you want to. A little Christmas tree. You know, still you wanna kind of leave some white spaces. You know, you don't wanna color it all in solid. And see, I'm just coming down here a little farther and adding a few more branches in. But you can kind of just shape it however you want to. We, we're basically just putting the texture in. And then our, our um, you know, our snow is going to...
And once that's dry, I mean, it just takes a second to dry. So, um, Janet's got to get back to work. Yes, Janet, you go. You can watch the. You can watch it later. Um, anybody else? Okay, let's move on. So my little tree is dry now. So I'm going to take my white and my number four brush because we're going to put quite a bit of white on here. And, you know, if you're not sure how to apply it for snow, the easiest way is to just sort of apply it like a ring, you know, on each level. So I'll show you. But you can also just, you know, look at different images of trees, you know, with snow and you can kind of copy that too. So I'm adding a little water to mine because it's really thick. And I just dip the tip of my uh, brush in and mix a little water to it. You can see how much paint I have on my brush here. And I'm just putting a little snow back here. And you know, if you want to, you could just you could just add a little snow to the top of his his little cap. But it's it's pretty hard to mess up the snow. It really is. You know, if you missed your little highlights, you can put them back on, you know, with your white, if you miss that. And if you water it down too much, the only thing that's going to do is that you might see a little color bleed through and just do another coat on top. So if that's the case, you just, you just happen to get too much water in, mixed into your paint. Um, don't worry about that. Just make another pass over the top. Okay, and I'm going to use my other water now, clean out my brush. Put this lid back on. And I'm going to, uh, we're gonna set this aside and let this dry. And let's go on to our other little um, our other little snowman and we'll come back in. We got to still do the little um, the little foliage on here and the little berries and then we're going to put in the sky with the snow in the background. So we've still got a few more little things to do, but he's kind of shaping up, isn't he? It's just so cute, you guys. I just I think my favorite thing is the um, the snowy trees. It's just you can't mess them up. You really can't. You just put these rings of white on and you're good to go. They're just so cute. So let's put this aside <clears throat> and let's go on to our next little guy. And I, I just went ahead and stamped it. I stamped it the exact same way as the other one. Uh, you're just going to uh, ink the whole thing in blue. And then really it's only these lines right here that don't have the brown. You know, maybe just this little area where his face is, but pretty much everything else. Um, I, did leave, I did leave the little band on his hat I left that blue just because I was going to leave that white. But for the most part, um, pretty simple. Okay, so we'll come, back to, we'll come back to this little guy once he's fully dry. And in the meantime, let's do this guy, this little guy, and then we'll do our, um, our little wreath. So we're going to start out <clears throat> same way, same way as we did the other one. Got my brush all cleaned off now. So I can come in here. Under here, this little, this little lip, 
Um, looks like I left that blue too. This little lip under here where that, uh, that's creating the, um, the image where it's kind of overhanging. Um, that's going to have a shadow under here. And then this here this is going to have a shadow at the bottom. Remember the scarf, you know, we're going to do the scarf the exact same way. Anything that hangs over, you know, like this, anything that hangs over, you're pulling the color from below the line. Uh, anything that you want to come forward. So because this is hanging over, I want this to come forward. Therefore, I'm pulling the color under the line. Same with this hat. I'm pulling the color over the line because I want this to come forward. You know, these little um, blades underneath here, we don't have to do a lot with them. This is a really simple, these are really simple little projects. They're really fun to do and they make great cards too. So you could, you could easily do these little projects on a, on a Christmas card, not just a journal. Okay, so here. This one too, we want this top to come forward <clears throat> because it's hanging over. So we're pulling that color from below the line. And then this side here, that's going to kind of be in the shadow. This one too. And this under here, this is going to be dark because that's hanging over. And this side will be a little dark because that's in the shadow. You see this one? These are kind of, they, they go back. This one goes back. This one goes back. And this goes back. And, you know, once you start putting in these things, your eye sort of gets the composition. Okay, I see where we're going with this. And now it's looking <clears throat> much more three-dimensional. Okay. That's always, this is always the first step and it really does help you to see um, <clears throat> the composition and it, it, it just takes you from <clears throat> the composition and it, it, it just takes you from that flat image where you've just stamped this flat image and it gives you this um, three dimensional little realistic little painting. Okay, so you can see now how that really has popped that up and made that more, <clears throat> more three-dimensional. Okay, so let's add some color just like we did to the other one. So I'm just going to clean off my brush and <clears throat> I'm going to take some of this green and I'm going to start in here. See the top of the hat? Want to see that little highlight do each section you know this little triangle it's its own section so you're going to do that separately from this down here always want to do everything in its own its own area and then let's take some of this and let's color in his little scarf you know if you anytime you think the color is too dark pinch your brush off just pinch it off it's going to really lighten everything up Okay, that looks good.
Okay, that looks good. So <clears throat> whilst I have that brush out actually, let's add a little detail to his scarf. It's just, it's looking too plain. So we'll just put some little stripes on here. And, you know, we might as well just put our shadow in. And this, you know, because it's kind of hanging over, you know, this is going to have a little bit of a shadow too. Same thing with his little body and his cheek. Uh, be careful if you've done his eyes that you don't get into that, um, that brown. A shadow underneath that, his hat. Okay, how are we doing? Everybody doing okay? Okay, let's go on to our little um, sleigh here. And I'm gonna switch to my, um, <clears throat> my number one and get my little red. And we're going to come in here too with <clears throat> a little foliage and some little berries. But let's go ahead and do the colors on the packages. And again, you can you can make these, you know, whatever colors uh, that you want, and match it to your paper. And you can't tell on mine, but I added glitter to mine. It's so cute. I mean, it just doesn't seem like it's Christmas without some glitter. So this little this little box, you know, this is going to be dark underneath. And actually this, this little side here too 
is going to be dark. And then I just went ahead and made this ribbon on here and I just put some stripes in. You know, I don't know if I've done a project where I haven't had stripes on something. I just, <laughs> it's always my go-to. I just, I love making them. I And I think it really, it changes up everything when you add some texture um, and some patterns. You know, it's the simple way to make something um, have a little extra pop. You know, and I got a little color on my sleigh, but that's okay. I can just wash it out. Uh, because that red wants to just stay. So I just kind of left this box white. And then let's do a, let's just do a little green one up here. And that side, you know, that's going to be, it's going to be darker. Same over here, each section. So you can see that this section is separate um, from here. And then the little, the little bow at the top, it's gonna have a little highlight Guess where? Yep, on the very top. Okay, he's starting to shape up, you guys. Starting to come together. Okay, how about some stripes, you guys? How about some stripes? What a great idea. See, these wouldn't continue down. They would be separate. And that also gives you the impression that the lid, this is a lid on these, on this gift. Okay, let's do the little, um, <clears throat> I know you guys probably aren't finished coloring. Um, is this, are you guys, is this fun so far? Um, I'm just having a, I'm just having the best time. <laughs> I absolutely love this so much. I also love uh, Christmas projects. 
you know, I love snowmen and, and now to be able to just add the white to it, it really, really, you know, it just, it makes it so much more fun. You know, you can always come back to it too. So, you know, if we move on and you're not finished putting stripes on your presents and you don't have everything finished, you can come back to it. You can come back to it and add water and it's going to be fine. <clears throat> okay, so let's put in our little, our little foliage like this. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to turn this so that It's easier to stamp. And then I'm just gonna add a little water to it. And we now have, if, you, uh, if you've gotten the, um, the Twin Tone pack, there's a great red in it, this one right here. If you don't have it, you can use the bullet tip on your red. So there's a fine tip and a brush tip. So you can use the bullet tip um, on here. Okay, so we've got our little um, our little greenery in there, and we can add, actually add. a little bow to it, if you want. Let's see, what else do we need? Okay, let's um, let's put the sky in and add our white, and then we'll go finish up our other our other little guy too. So I'm gonna add quite a bit of this dark blue onto my palette. So it is this 565. And we're just gonna Kind of water this down. Uh, be careful not to touch any of your edges because they will they will kind of bleed out. So you just want to apply this. And I think you know this kind of blotchy look is so cute. So you're just giving the impression of this dark sky, and we're gonna add some snowflakes to it. So just the, just the idea of it. And then, you know, the snow is just going to kind of come along just like this. And he's going to be in a little frame. So we're not going to see a huge amount of the sky, um, just a little bit. Okay, so let's bring the other guy over here and we'll do the same with this one. <clears throat> we'll just add the, we'll add the sky in here. Just kind of push it around. So that's that's really what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pushing the color. You know, I'm I'm laying kind of laying it on here, and then I'm just kind of pushing it around. And some areas, you know, are darker and some are lighter. That's okay. Okay, now for this little tree. Uh, before we're finished with it, we have one more little step to do. So take some of this blue 
and you're just going to come right along the bottom of the snow. You can paint right over the top of the white and we're just basically creating a little shadow under here. And the same for this little pile of snow on his hat. We're just putting a little bit of that blue under here. You see how that just kind of lifts that up um, under his, on top of his hat. So cute. Okay, he is just getting so cute. Just love snowmen, absolutely love them. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's put his little, the little foliage on his hat. And we're just gonna use the green. Just ink this up and just put it on here. And just blend it out. Make sure that's dry. I think it is. And we'll just add some little berries on here. And we can probably, can we fit a little bow on here? Maybe. Okay, you could also, you know, if you wanted to, <clears throat> you could put some little ornaments on here. That would be really cute. A little star on the top of your tree. That would be really cute too. So for now, we're just going to take some more of this and dip my brush in here. Still got quite a bit of water in here, so. And I, I'm, st I'm just using my number four. And just add You know, if the snow's falling, there's going to be some little snowflakes falling, you know, on the front of him, too. Few little white spots on there that'd be so cute you can you can just put as much snow on here you know obviously if your sky is darker uh you're gonna see the snow a lot better but i just think that's so cute okay so let's move this guy out of the way and let's do this one And you just, you know, I'm just, I'm using my number four brush and it's totally fine just because this is the one I've used. And it makes his hat look kind of fuzzy.
How's everybody doing? I know I, I kind of went faster on this project, but a lot of it is the same as this one. Uh, the way that we color it is very similar. And, you know, adding the white to it also really similar. Okay, so let me move these to the side. We've got one little project left to do, and that is this tiny little wreath. And I cut this out of uh, this die right here. So this is part of your journal dies. And uh, I just cut this, my watercolor paper out using this, this little die. <clears throat> so we're gonna use this guy right here. And we're just gonna go in a circle. I mean, this is the easiest. I saved the easiest one for last, you guys. So just start on the edge and just go around. And I'm going backwards. You can go the other direction too. It's just, it's a little easier to see uh, where the circle is if you're going around this direction. I mean, for me anyway. And guess what? It doesn't have to be perfect. And, you know, kind of look at it and just see if you need to add, you know, anything else in here. <clears throat> just in a big circle. And then I just, I just grab my little brush. So my little number one. And I'm just going to soften all of this in here. These little wreaths are just, they're so cute and they're just, they're really fun to just add to, you know, a little tiny tag or um, like this little mini card that we've got that we're putting in our, our journal. And I made this really simple. You can obviously add more things to it <clears throat> if you want to. But this is such a simple way to um, make a wreath <laughs> and this little foliage. I mean, it's the tiniest little thing, but it's so versatile. It's just, we're going to use it a lot in here in this, in this journal, but we don't need a lot. Really. We need a tree like this one. We need a little tiny foliage, some little grasses, and we don't, we just don't need a lot. Okay. I'm going to use my bullet tip on this one, uh, just because I think some of you may not have that twin tone. So we can use the bullet tip. And you can put these just, you know, wherever you you want to put them. Got our little red berries. <clears throat> and you know, you can put a little um a little bow on here, just like we did on the other ones, just loops, just simple loops like this. And you know, a little A little string coming down. And if you want to, I mean, it's totally optional. You can add a little blue to the center just to give it a little more um, depth. Uh, be careful not to touch the red. Uh, you know, I probably should have told you to do this first before you added the red. Um, my bad, you guys. So now you have to be careful not to touch the red, but it's not that hard. Okay, so we've got our little wreath. We've got our other little projects. <clears throat> so I'm going to move my things out of the way so we can assemble our journal. I don't know. Things just close on in on me. I mean, I don't know. Has that happened to you guys? Because I can, I can have the biggest workspace and end up with about eight inches on either side. Um, okay. So here are, <clears throat> here are the projects that we've done. We've got three of them. So we're going to put these into our journal now. And I also have them um, already cut out. 
So let me just get these things out of the way here. So here are my little clasps. I have one done and uh, cut out on the oval and I'll show you which oval that is. You don't necessarily need to use an oval. You can use a square if you don't have an oval. But here's, here's how I did it. And so I'm just gonna show you how I did it and I'll give you all the me measurements of everything so that you can put it together. Um, if you want to do it like this, or you can do it, you know, a different way too. It's totally fine. It's totally up to you. Okay, so here are the clasps. First of all, uh, let me show you how these things go together, okay? Uh, I made a mistake on my first one. I wasn't, I just, you know, my mind was elsewhere. So I thought I need to make a point of telling you exactly how to cut these, um, the journals. So let me zoom out. And make sure that I have, you can see everything here. Okay, here is, this is the journal die, okay? This is the cover, the book. And when you cut it and you run it through your Big Shot or your Gemini or whatever you're running it through, this is the top here. And especially if the back side has a print to it. If it doesn't have a print to it, it doesn't matter. Mine did. So mine had a, a print on the inside when I went to run it through, okay? And what you need to do is run it through this way. This is the top. So the rounded edges are the top. Run it once like this, then turn it and run it through again. Just the exact same way, just turn the die. And the reason is because uh, I, when I cut it and I had to, I had to change it because I cut it backwards. Mine came out like this. So I had one half right side up and one half upside down. So if that happens to you and you really want that paper, you can, you can either, you can glue the, um, so it goes like this. Here's the one that I cut. You see the rounded corners on all four sides. Uh, I just cut two more rounded corners because I really, I just wanted to use this because this is what I used before and I wanted to show you how to make that book. So you can just glue the rounded edges to the square edges too, you know, if that's the case. It really doesn't matter that much. You know, yeah, you're going to see it's not going to line up perfectly uh, because of the rounded corners, but big deal. But this is how it goes. See, the rounded corners go on the top. So when you open it, See, it looks like this. And here's, here's your spines on the side. And it comes forward like this. So <clears throat> this is how it should look, okay? So here's the one I cut that was correct. So it's, this is the one that you run through straight. And you can see it has the design right side up. Then you turn it and run this one through the other way. So this one runs through this way with a square. And now you have two C2 that line up exactly. This is how you glue them together. You just overlay one, the flat pieces, you overlay them and just glue them together. And then you have the book like this. Okay? So we can use either one of those. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to make sure you understood one, two. And then it doesn't matter. If you just get in the habit of doing it that way, it doesn't matter if you have a print on the back side or not. Um, you're gonna, it's gonna work out perfect. Okay, so let's just do that right now. Let's just glue these two together. <clears throat> and I, you know, for the cover, I probably would, I, I use glue and adhesive tape. I use both. If you're gluing the pages in, I would recommend, if you have glue, I would recommend using glue. It's gonna, it's just gonna really hold better. And it's a small area to attach. Um, when it comes to a big surface like this, I probably would just use adhesive tape um, just because, you know, it's going to be easier and I don't need as much glue. And it'll, it'll be flat. It'll stay flat. <clears throat> so let's just glue this in like this. And I'm just using um, this tape, double-sided.
whoops, got a little bit over there. Don't go over your spine. Um, you're just gonna you're just gonna be flush to this line. Okay, so now I can just pull off, pull this tape off. And this one. Okay, now if they're going to, it's gonna align with this score line right here. So this one's gonna come in and it's just gonna line right up against this score line. And just make sure that's all really even. On the edge. And there we go. So we've got our book, our cover all ready. Now um, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna make all the pages. And you know, it's it's kind of up, it's kind of up to you if you want to glue them in as we go. You can, you know, it it is probably a little easier to add all your pieces, you know, your decorative uh, pieces to your pages and then glue them in when they're finished front and back. So it's kind of up to you. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to wait on this one until we do the back side, and then we'll glue it in next time. But I'll show you how it goes in. Okay, so let's do the cover. And that is this right here. And I've got my little pieces ready to go. So here's here's how this is going to go together. I have a contrasting color here. And then I've cut this little piece with this, using this. Okay? So I just cut it. And I found that it's easier to just... Uh, cut a square and then do the um, do the edge because you can just line it up. So see, just like this, you can line it up to the edge and make sure it's straight. See how those little knobs are to the edge? And then run it through and then it's straight on your paper. So let me tell you the dimensions of these. This is, this is what it's going to look like when we glue it together. And this size, uh, let me get my ruler out here. This size is about three and a quarter inches. Three and a quarter, is it? Let me look on this one. Let's just make sure about that. Uh, yes, yeah, three and a quarter inches. So from the very uh, widest part of this little fringe, so here's three and a quarter right here three and a quarter to the edge of your decorative piece is three and a quarter inches. Okay. And this piece, I just cut this. This is um, about two and seven eighths by four. So two and seven eighths by four. And then this one just glues behind it to equal three and a quarter. Or just somewhere close. You know, it doesn't have, like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. It's just close. So th this is what we're going to do. We're going to glue this, these two together now. And also, this doesn't need to be this thick. You can, you can just do a small edge that you can, you can glue onto here. This is just how I did it. So I'm going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to add my adhesive now and glue these two together. Like this and I'm sure this will hold without even having any extra on the sides so I'm going to just glue this on and I'm gonna kind of guess here you could also just use a pencil but that's probably pretty close yep three and a quarter so you can you can use a, a pencil and draw a line here if you want to just you know kind of however you want to you want to do it and it's just going to fit basically it's just going to fit inside this this square <clears throat> and I've got a little bit right here let me just cut this part off I see a little white kind of showing through that's going to bug me 
Okay, now it's gone. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, glue this in kind of centered in here. So centered from the top to bottom and then centered from the score line to the edge here. So just like that. You can, can you see the score line on here? It's just right, it's just right here. That's the score line. So you can see, I'm gonna just kind of center this right onto the cover, just like that. So let's get some more tape. And you know, you can use glue or tape you know, for this doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, this isn't holding a lot of weight. So, um, not like the pages would be. Oops, out of that one. So let's pick a new one here. There we go. This tape is just, it's so handy. You know, you guys probably have really good tools and really good adhesive. So um, every crafter has, has their stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna hold this right here so that I can kind of see where that goes and just kind of lay it like this and just kind of guess that looks pretty good uh, right there. <clears throat> so we've got our first piece on, looks good. And now we can add our little uh, snowman to it, to the cover. And I cut it out, this one uh, is this, so I use these, these, this is what I used of the double stitch dies. So these are the ovals um, that we have in this set. And let me just tell you what size they are. So this one is the, this one is uh, three and, this looks like three and a quarter, three and a quarter by two and a half. Looks like two and a half. And that's the one I cut this little guy out of, the smaller one. And then the next one up, the very next one up is three and three quarter. Oh, well, let's see, got that turned. Three and three quarters by three. Looks like by three. So that's just the next, that's the next size up. And I just cut that. Uh, just to go underneath here like that. And I just use white cardstock, just plain white. And so I'm just gonna put these two together. And you know, like I said, you could you could just use a um, you could use a rectangle too. And we'll just put this guy oh almost had a disaster here. So we'll put this guy right in the center of this oval. And then we'll move this to our page, just like that. That's where he's going. Couple more of these. Like so. And the last one here. Anybody have any questions on this? Oh gosh, Barb. I was off to a good start, then discovered I put it on upside down. Oh no. Oh shoot. You know what? It might be worth it just to cut another cover. Is it the is if you can't get it off the cover, darn. I feel, I feel I've done that. Well, I cut my cover backwards, you know, so. Okay, so there is our little guy on the front. And 
when we do the clasps, we're going to do the clasps on here. It doesn't matter if you've got a bunch of layers on here. You just glue these right on. You just glue them right over the top. So they go just like this. Just flush with the edge. And you can have all kinds of stuff on the front of the cover. And it won't matter. You can still put your little fasteners on. So we're going to do those at the very end. <clears throat> And let's do the inside now. So let me get this out of the way here. This out of the way. Okay, let's put our little um, our little card together. And I've also got one cut, but I might as well use the one that I just made. Where did I put that? Oh, here. Might as well use this one that I just made since it's already cut. Okay, so this one, the little card. We're gonna make the little card and it is, I'll tell you the dimensions. It is, uh, it's four and a quarter by two and three quarters. So four and a quarter and then scored right down the middle. So four and a quarter and then scored at two and an eighth, two and three quarters inch tall. And then this little decorative piece, I mean, you can cut this however you want to. This is two by um, about two and a half, two by two and a half. So we're going to attach this um, to the front, just like that. Let's just use tape since I've just got it right here. And we'll just glue it to our little card base. You could put a little personal message in here. They're just, you know, there's so many things. There's so many ways that you can <laughs> dress these up. Um, it's just, it's just going to be so fun because we're all going to think of different things to use. Okay, here's what I used. Uh, here's where I used the the um, the double stitch circle. So if you don't have this one, you've probably got a circle die in your stash, or you could just put it on here like this too. You don't necessarily even need to back it to anything. Um, totally up to you. I use the double stitch die just because, you know, I wanted to get a little extra color in here. But, um, <clears throat> you know, if you don't, if you're missing that one die, it's, it's totally okay. This is, you know, gonna, you're probably gonna make some changes and have it, you know, look a little different anyway. So it's totally fine. So I've just put it onto this contrasting paper and now I'm going to attach it to my little card. And you could you could kind of just put it anywhere. You know, there's little tiny <clears throat> banners too. You could put a put a little banner down below here and have a little message on it too. You know, on the inside. So we're gonna it's gonna go right on the inside of the cover right here, and <clears throat> we're gonna add our contrasting paper first. So that is this die. Now there are two. One is very plain and simple, just a, a rectangle, and this one is decorative. So that's, this is the one that I used on both pages. I used this, and I cut it out of this, um, this teal paper. And then the pocket. So the pocket is going to go over the top just like this, and it is this die. It's this die right here, and it's included in your die set. And it cuts the tabs, see these, these little tabs that score, and then you just fold them in. So just like this. So you're going to cut that, and you're going to fold it along the score line. And then you're going to attach it to the inside of your cover, just right here, just like this. And then your little card goes inside. So let's do it. Let's do that. So I'm going to add some... 
And see this paper, this isn't even Christmas, you guys, but I just really like the teal stripe. So, you know, I had to really hunt for a Christmas paper in my stash. I thought I would have a ton of it. Uh, but, you know, your little scraps and stuff, you're going to be able to use those. Uh, because a lot of these things are small. And any 6x6, six six, if you buy a 6x6 six six pad, it's you're going to be able to cut two... Um, two of these from one six by six sheet. So that's kind of nice too. So you don't waste your paper. Okay, so taking this tape off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna center it uh, like it would be on the, um, on the page. So just like we did kind of on the front, we're going to make these, these little borders kind of all the same. So here's the score line where my ruler is. And I'm just going to come over like this and glue it in like this. So I've kind of got a wider lip over here. And then I'm going to do the same um, to the page when I go to put it in. So they'll line up. Basically, that's what we're doing. We're, we're kind of making these things line up. So when I go to put the page in, see like this, that contrasting paper will be the same, will look the same. I'll show you when we do it. Okay, so now let's glue in our pocket. And in this case, I'm going to use glue because um, I want this to really hold. So I'm going to do the bottom <clears throat> and then glue the bottom in just like this and then fold the fold the other two in like this. So I don't know, maybe I should just put the glue on the whole thing. I'm using this, okay? So this was re, uh, recommended to me. I love this glue. I've never used it before and I bought it and then I bought a big thing of it because I don't know if you guys use it. Sometimes, I, you know, I'm not aware of all the stuff that's out there because I am so in my own world creating the things that I do that I, I don't, you know, I'm really, I'm not out there very much seeing what is new and great. So if you guys have recommendations for me, I love to, I love that. So this was recommended and you guys probably all have it in your stash. I'm probably the only one that doesn't, but this stuff is great. It's great. So <clears throat> I'm going to just put this on, on here like this. And like this. And, you know, this really holds. So when you're doing a pocket, you really want to make sure that, that that really holds. Okay, so this is going to go in here kind of towards the bottom. And just, you know, you just want to make sure it's straight. And just glue it in. Dries really fast, too, which is also great. And then it has, it just has a little uh, pin that goes back in, comes like that. This is the best. That glue, but use very sparing. Oh, less is more, Sherry said. Has refills, I love Barely Arts glue. Okay, um, who carries the art glitter glue? Uh, I got this on Amazon. I mean, you know, Amazon just has, just has everything. So I bought it on Amazon and it came with this small one uh, with a little fine tip, and then it came with a big refill, too. Okay, so now we've got our little pocket in. We can tuck in our little card, just like this. How cute. And then our little decorative, our little decorative thing. And I just stamped the little joy on here. So it's, it's from the, um, it is from this clear set. It's got all these sentiments on here. Ta whoops, let's do it the right way. It's got all these sentiments on here. So many different Christmas ones um, that you can put on, put in your journal. Tons of them. So I just, I stamped this little joy. So let's just, let's just attach this right now. One little tiny piece of tape. And, you know, like I said, you could decorate your, your, um, 
pockets and everything else, however. This little uh, tiny die comes in your set. So here's this one, the little joy. Yes, Edna says, most craft stores carry the glue. Be sure to use a stainless steel pin or it will turn the glue brown. Yes, that's right. And it comes with that little uh, stainless steel pin. Okay, you guys, we have our first page done. Our cover and our first page on the inside done. So we are going to go to the next one. And this is the one that I was thinking, maybe we wait and glue this in after we get the backside done at the next tutorial, and then we'll just glue it into the book. But we'll for sure um, decorate it right now. So we'll do the little, the little contrasting piece. So see, it's gonna glue in just like this. So that's why we kind of centered this so that it would um, mir mirror this one. <clears throat> so I've got my little frame. This is part of your die set. And it is this one right here. So this is in, this is included. So I just cut that out with a red. You know, like I said, I'm just using red and teal, mostly red and teal and green, and this cool green, which I just love. Um, so let's glue this in. And I happen to have this one all cut, so I made another one. So I can just show you how to include it or glue it in. And the frame C is gonna go right over the top. So this is cut to, let me tell you what this is cut to. Uh, where's my ruler? This is cut to three and an eighth. Three and an eighth by um, about two. I mean, just a just a smidge over two, but about two, two inches. So three and an eighth by two, two inches wide. So let's glue this down or let's use some tape. See how that fits in the center like that? Um, that's what we did here to kind of mirror that. So I'm gonna just use my tape. You guys, I'm just having the best time. <laughs> I'm going so far over. I mean, it is 12 o'clock and I'm just like having the best time. So thanks for hanging in here with me. Thanks for hanging. How many of you guys are actually doing this with me or you're going to wait till, uh, wait till it's, <laughs> wait to, and watch it later. Is anybody with me still? Julie says worth watching. She is watching. Thank you, Julie. You are still on. Yes, uh, Rebecca says, yes, that frame is awesome. It is, so, it really is. It's so cute. I mean, oh, it's just really cute. I tried to use everything at least one time. And then I made some changes too. You know, like I said, when we, we get prototypes, we order prototypes, then we try them. And then we see if there are any adjustments and changes that we need to make to make them better. And so there were a few things that we kind of switched up. Okay, so now we've got our paper on, so you can see that just mirrors that, and it's gonna go in the book just like this. So now we can glue this little guy right in the center. And you could even, I mean, you've got room, you could, uh, you could move him up a little bit and put a little banner under here if you want to. I just, I just have him right in the center, but um, totally up to you if you wanna add anything more to him. So we're just gonna, we're gonna glue him down or tape him down. And you know, really what is showcased is your work. So that's what people's eye is gonna go to. And yeah, they're gonna see all the pockets and frames and everything, but where their eye is going is to your unique 
and individual artwork. And that is what the fun thing is, is because they're going to, this whole book is going to be filled with your art. It's all going to kind of flow because it's similar. It's the same technique. And people are just gonna, they're absolutely gonna love it if you can bring yourself to give it away because um, they're really fun to keep. And maybe you just keep it as a brag book and you just put it on your shelf and look at it because it's so fun to make. And honestly, you know, once you make one, um, you're just going to, you're going to want to make another one right away and maybe make it a little different, use different paper. Okay. Well, I mean, thanks for hanging in here with me, you guys. I really didn't know how long this would all take either. And I wanted to make sure that I wasn't um, just flying through it and make sure you understood the whole process. So I think that looks pretty straight. And then I, I've got some little pop dots. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pop this up just in the, just in the corners here. I mean, this is totally optional too. You don't necessarily have to do this either. But you know, I love things that are three-dimensional. I absolutely love that, which is why I love this book so much. Uh, so I love things that kind of pop up and tuck inside. And, um, you know, I use glue dot or uh, pop dots if I can. Okay, so now let's take these off. All of these little backs so we can glue this down and it will just fit right over um, the top and by the way make sure you guys sign each one each one of these little art pieces make sure you are signing them did I get that a little crooked uh, that's gonna bug me make sure you sign them they're all individual original um, works of art and so they need to all be signed where you can see it so let me make sure that I have this straight okay that looks better okay there we go we've got that one done so let's do our uh, let's do our clasp, and then we'll glue this in next time when we get the back done. So on the next tutorial, unless you want to, you can you can totally glue it in. When I made the prototype, I had all the pages in, so I just you know I just glued everything to it. But um, you know I feel like it might be a little bit easier to be able to lay it flat and not glue it in until the pages are finished. But if you want to, the score line. It's going to be glued uh, flush with the score line. So here is the score line right here. And this one is going to, do you see this bend? It's going to bend forward, not backwards, forward, so that you can see that lip. And it's going to go right to the edge of the score line. And it's going to be glued right here like that. And the reason is because we want space in between this page and this page. That's why this lip is here. And that's why it, um, it folds forward and we don't fold it back because we need to have this little, this space in between here and this. So it's going to fold forward and it's going to glue right in next to the spine. So we'll, we'll, uh, put this together next time. So let me move that out of the way and let's get our clasp on because we can for sure do that. So just kind of lay this lay this on here like this, and you're going to glue, let me just lay it like this, this will be the easiest. This is the easiest way to do it, I found, is, uh, and I'm gonna use glue. So you're only adding glue to this little pentagon section. This part here doesn't have any glue, so don't put anything, any adhesive or anything on this section, okay? And you could use one or two or three of these. And it will glue right over. And where you want to place it is flush with the edge. Flush with the edge of your journal. 
So just like that, right over the top, just glue it right over the top and then put your other one just similar. I mean, you can mark it too if you want to. I, I usually end up just eyeballing stuff and then sometimes it's crooked, but um, in this case, this is this is about where it would go. See where that line is? See that um, that edge? That's flush with the edge of your journal. And and we, you know, we changed these a little bit. We we gave them a little bit more room, the strap, a little bit more room. So you can, mine that I made, my prototype, you can see they overhang a little bit here. Uh, now they go flush to the edge. And they really stay. They really stay. So I'm going to add my glue um, just to the pentagon area. And just glue it flush to the edge. So just like that. And leave this area open because that's where you're going to add your strap. Okay, so now this is, to me, this is the easiest way to do it. So I've got, I can fold this shut now and you can see this is how it's going to close, just like this. So I put my strap in. This one's folded. You can see the score line. So you want to score it. You want to fold it on the score lines, just like this. Put your strap in like this. See where that score line is? The score line is goes right to the edge. So put your little strap in just like that, just like you were going to close it. And it's going to go right to the edge, just like that. Now turn it over and then glue it straight. So this part doesn't glue. There's no glue on this part at all. And there's no glue on the tip. So the only place where there's glue is this section right here. This little, I guess that's a pentagon too. So I'm gonna add some glue to this. I'm, I hope I'm not off the screen, you guys. I'm so sorry if I am. So I'm gonna add this onto here now, and I'm just gonna go like this. Make sure it's straight. Make sure my journal is straight and fold this over just like that, and then glue it down. Glue it down to the back. And then do the same on the other side. So this one too, um, here's the score line. So you can see the score line. So fold that, just like that, put this in to the edge. And then you can see exactly where that's going to glue. So now I can add my um, glue. Um, just, you know, make sure it's, it's lined up and it's straight and fold it down over and just glue it down. And there you go. You got your little clasps in and they open easily. They just open like this. And this is this, remember this part is not glued. It's only glued to the back, back side. And we've got our cover and we've got our first page in you guys, we did it. And it only took two hours. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, to me, it's fine. It's totally fine. I'm, I'm, I would way rather take two hours and make sure that you understood everything. Even if we go really slow, uh, I think it's worth it. I don't want to leave anyone behind and I don't want anyone to be frustrated um, with what we're doing. But um, this was so fun and we are going to be on to the next page. So let me just show you what we're going to need for the next one. So the next page, and that will be in two weeks. So that will be August, I believe that's August 3rd. So two weeks from Wednesday. Can you see the little glitter on there? I just put a ton of glitter on. You probably can't even see it, but it's so cute. <clears throat> so this is the page that we're going to be doing next time. We're going to make this little tag that just fits right in here with a little envelope. And uh, this little guy, so the little mailbox with the mail in it and the cardinal. 
So let me show you the dies we're going to be using. So we're going to be using these, of course, this one, that decorative one. So this one, this little decorative one that's in your die set, we're going to use that to cut the edge, uh, the little envelope. So this envelope die. And this little banner and this little banner right here and I think I think that's all the page so you'll for sure want a page to cut a page and that is this one so this cuts your pages so we'll need a page for this this will be the back side of the one we just did but uh, we'll need a page for this and then we'll glue this one in once we've got the front and back done we'll glue this one in and then it is this set right here. So it's 5543, the, um, or a, it's, I'm sorry, it's 5575, the mailbox and birdhouse set. So this one. And then in addition, here's that, here's that little birdhouse that had the blue jays that I made into a cardinal. So that's this cardinal right here. And it's this, this little guy. So if you don't have this and you have a bird, we can, um, we can turn it into a cardinal. I'll show you how next time. And then uh, we only need this one. This is Bible Foliage Set 2, and we're going to use these little holly, holly, bra holly branches. And we're going we're gonna to create this decorative part on here. And that's all. That's all we're going to need. Um, we're going to have so much fun on the next page. So I hope you guys uh, will be back with me again. So let me switch my camera over <clears throat> and see if there are any questions. Do you guys have any questions? Um, Sheila says, worth the two hour instruction video. Uh, now my next one won't take as long. Exactly, that's exactly right. So the next one will be way quicker because you know what you're doing. You've already stamped and colored these little guys and they're so fun. Um, I figured it would take an hour per image, Mary says. So I think we're ahead of schedule. <gasps> Yay, I love that. Okay, we're ahead of schedule, you guys. We're good. Um, Tina, thank you for taking time to help with instructions. You are so welcome. I absolutely love this. I'm so thankful that I get to do this. And you guys are just the best. And I love that you're as excited about this as I am. So it is just, it's so much fun. And um, and if you haven't done this and you're watching and you don't have all of the journaling information, just like I said, go to that previous tutorial that says new release and a reveal. And you'll see all about the journaling and what you need to get started. And if you're going week to week, you can do that. You don't necessarily have to have everything right now. Just get your set of dies and um, you can use things that you have too. We have little snowman in the watercolor line. You could use uh, some of those. You can get your set if you're following along with me uh, as we go, as you go. We have, you have two weeks now to finish these pages that we just did. If you've been watching, you got two weeks now to finish up for the next time. And then we'll go on to the next project. Which bird from the large birdhouse set? Okay, let me show you. Um, it is, <clears throat> it is this one right here. This little guy right here with the little crown on his head. So I just put him up here. I just put him on the mailbox and turned him into a cardinal. So we can do it. You guys can do it. If you have that stamp, great. If you don't, I'll show you how to make a little cardinal on your own. Um, I missed where you said about the paper. Where did you get the paper? Uh, there is a, Leah, where is that information about the paper? There is a list of paper that I used uh, for the most part. Um, I really just use a lot of different things and a lot of things that aren't even um, even watercolor. And I, I believe it was last week's tutorial that I showed you the paper. I think it was actually. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, really it, it's, it's showcasing your work. So you, you don't want to overpower your, your watercolor projects. You don't want to overpower those. So if you have some green and red, uh, you know, or some, you know, mix of colors, it doesn't necessarily have to be Christmas. We are totally getting that it's Christmas because of the projects that we're doing. So if you don't have uh, you know, specific Christmas paper. Don't worry about that. Just, you know, just find some, you know, simple patterns. You could, you could use, uh, you could use white too. So don't worry about that. 
Um, okay, you guys. Thank you so much. What a fun uh, Watercolor Wednesday. I'll be back next week with a regular Watercolor Wednesday project. Um, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Kendra will be back with uh, Back to Basics uh, on Tuesday night. So she is back in full form, ready to do her Back to Basics again. We're so happy that we get to still have her. She is so talented. Um, okay, did you use heavier? Yes, yes, so the cover needs to be a heavy cardstock. So when you go to buy something, uh, make sure that it's heavy weight. Um, that is a must because it's got to hold a lot of, it's got to hold a lot of pages. And it will, it will get uh, much more substantial the more pages that we add to it. But you do want to make sure that you're using a heavy weight um, paper. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. I will see you all again next week. And I'll, I'll, um, we will um, make sure to have all of this information on the blog. So remember, you can go to artimpressions.com, click on the blog. Uh, Renee has everything set up on there for you to see. Don't forget the hashtag. Let me see where that is. The hashtag that is... So the hashtag is AI Watercolor Christmas Journal. So if you're on Instagram, make sure you tag your work with AI Christmas Journal, AI Watercolor Christmas Journal, so that we can see it. If you have already completed a journal, please, please upload it to the blog. I would love to see it. If you finish pages today, if you finish these pages, whenever you do, please, please upload them to the blog so that I can see them. I would love to see your work and see what you're doing. That would be amazing. Uh, make sure to use, here's Renee's um, list of instructions, use the two, the tab called Bonnie's Journal, journal at the top of the blog. So when you click on at artimpressions.com, go to the blog, make sure at the top you use the tab that says Bonnie's Journal. Every tutorial will be tagged with Bonnie's Christmas Watercolor Journal Tutorial. This one is number one, so you'll be able to go back and reference them. We're going to have them all listed in order, so you can go back, you can share it with someone, you can go back and repeat all of these tutorials um, to finish the book. Uh, if you need to see previous ones, they will all be there. You can go to the bottom of the current one and click that tag, and it will take you to the previous ones. Upload your pages just like you would a challenge card. Be sure to add your first name, so your first name and your last initial. So it would be Bonnie K, something like that. So be sure to add your first name and your last initial so we know whose project it is. And then Instagram the, the hashtag. So you guys, I hope you do these things. I would love, love, love to see them if you do. Uh, that would just make my day. All right, everyone, I will let you all go after two hours and 15 minutes. What a fun morning. Thanks so much for hanging with me. I have had the best time with you all, and I will see you all next week.